This video is sponsored by the Ultimate Freelancing Bundle from StudyWebDevelopment.com, which gives you everything you need to start your freelancing business, including a 130-page in-depth guide, invoicing and client proposal templates, website templates, an SEO checklist, and much more. Visit the link in the description and use the code BRAD20 to get 25% off. Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome to another vlog type style video, I guess, where we kind of pick a topic and I talk about it, talk about my experience as well as ways to help some of you guys out if possible, hopefully. Um, now in this video, I want to talk about finding the time to learn new things and also work on your own projects while you have a full-time job. And, and this could be a, a full-time job as a developer or as something else. Um, either way, it takes up most of your day and it's hard to find that time. Uh, now for me, obviously right now it's a little different. I'm in a different situation. I learn for a living, uh, learn and teach for a living, but it wasn't always like that. I did a lot of client work for many years and I would go to work for eight, nine, sometimes 10 hours a day at my office and then come home and learn more stuff that I wasn't really doing at work. Okay, so uh, I didn't really do it in an efficient way. I did it in kind of a way that burnt me out. It was too much. I'd come right home and then go on the computer and, and uh, my family life suffered a little bit. So you don't want to do that, but you do want to, you do want to work on your own stuff and learn new technologies, even if you have a job, even if you have a job as a developer. Um, and I want to talk about that for a little bit. So if you, if you're new to working as a developer, you may notice some of you, some of the older, uh, you know, people that have been there for a while. They only code at work, and they may have seemed to kind of lose their passion and, and treat it more like a punch clock job. You just go in and do your thing and leave. Um, when before, most likely they were really passionate. They always wanted to be coding, always wanted to be learning new things. They were watching tutorials and conference talks and all that. Um, it's easy to lose that passion once you get that job. And I'm not exactly sure why that happens. I think maybe, uh, maybe it's just tiring, like to, to go to work all day and come home and study more. Um, also, maybe they feel like they've made it. So why bother learning other stuff? when they've, they already have a job as a developer. But you, you don't want to fall into that trap, and there's a few reasons why. One, if you're learning other stuff off the job, you have more to bring to the table to your current position. Um, you know, a lot of companies, they, they they have their own stacks, which is, which is fine, which is great, but a lot of them, um, even if they go out of date, they'll still use it because they're kind of scared to switch things up. Um, for instance, you know, companies using Angular JS still. Maybe they have a hundred clients that that have applications built on Angular JS. Um, if you are on the side learning the newer version of Angular, which right now is six, but you know, could be five hundred at the time you're watching this, going by the Angular version version system. Uh, but if you brought that to the table to your boss, to your to your senior developer or whoever, and uh, mentioned, you know, maybe we should try this for newer clients. Uh, that could get you some brownie points that could, uh, you know, even get you a promotion um, or it could backfire and you could have a really arrogant senior developer. A lot of them are really arrogant and they don't want to, to take suggestions from people, you know, below them. Um, and if that's true, then that's unfortunate. That's a shitty workplace, a shitty work environment. Um, it could go either way, but, um, you know, even if you don't do that, it, you know, you're bettering yourself. Um, if you get another job, if you lose this job, maybe you get laid off, maybe they go out of business because they're using old technology. Um, maybe you, maybe you want to leave, maybe, you know, your boss is a dick and you want a better, uh, better work environment, or you get offered a job for more money. Either way, if you're learning constantly on the side, you're, you're improving yourself as a developer in addition to what you do at work. All right, so when you have a job and you work all day and you, and you come home, you know, you probably don't, especially if you're a developer, you probably don't want to jump right on the computer and, and, and go back into coding. Um, so what I would suggest doing is really analyzing your mornings. Uh, mornings are a great time, at least for me, to, to learn because it's quiet, it's relaxed, um, you know, you're not, you're not tired from the day. You're, you're, you know, you're energized. And, uh, I find that mornings are great. So 
Obviously, there's no standard because everyone's different. Everyone has to be at work at a different time. Everyone wakes up at a different time. But let's say you you have to be at work at eight or nine. Um, if you can get up at like six or like me, get up at five, um, and you can get an hour or, or even two hours in of learning, of watching, you know, whatever conference talks, t- talks, talks, tutorials, uh, do a couple sections of a course. Whatever it may be, work on your own stuff, your own plugins or, or themes or, or so, uh, any kind of software. If you can get a couple hours of that in, in the morning, that's, that's fantastic. And that will, um, you know, that'll also kind of energize you for the day for your, your regular job. Um, while people are scuffling in, just waking up and their, their brains are all foggy, you've already been coding for an hour or two hours and you're ready to go and you're probably going to do a better job. All right. So, um, you know, I kind of struggled with mornings a little bit a while ago because I do like to game. I'm not like a hardcore gamer, but I like to play, you know, first person shooters. And and the morning was the really the only time I could do that. And, you know, after a while, I just felt like it was, um, you know, I could be doing something much more productive. I could be working on courses on YouTube. I could be working on uh, just learning new things or or watching stuff that that is that's feeding my brain rather than just shooting people in a game every morning. So you know, making the switch from 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 gaming to to doing something productive was kind of a struggle uh, because I'd go back and forth between this is a waste of time. It's it's doing nothing for me, and then also. Uh, you know, why can't I have a hobby and do some, why does everything have to be productive? Why can't I do something that I enjoy? So I go back and forth and I'm sure you guys have, have done that too. Maybe not gaming, but, but something, um, that's, you know, something that you like to do that's not necessarily productive or, or good for you. Um, so what I did is I split it up at first. I would game for a little bit and then go and, and do, you know, my own stuff, my coding and all that, uh, you know, split it up and then ultimately just got rid of the gaming. Uh, so, you know, if you don't have the luxury of, of the morning, if maybe you have to be at work at six, um, or maybe, you know, you have to get your kids ready for school really early or something like that, then, if you have to learn at night, I would definitely not suggest walking in the door after work and, and doing it. You know, at, that's the time where, especially if you have a family, you should be spending time with your family, uh, eating dinner, cooking dinner. You know, if you have kids, play with them, take them to the park or whatever. And then maybe at night, like, uh, you can watch a two, uh, one hour of TV instead of two or not watch TV at all. Um, or maybe you could even alternate your sleep a little bit. Now, don't get me wrong, sleep is incredibly important. Uh, it's different for everybody. Some people need seven or eight hours of sleep, um, or they're sluggish the next day and it defeats the whole purpose. Some people can sleep four hours and they, they, they go through the day fine. Um, I myself get around six, sometimes five, and that seems to work fine for me, but again, everyone's different. If you can go to bed an hour later and still be productive and still have the same mental state and physical stamina, then maybe that's something to look at, you know, take that extra hour. Um, same in the morning, if you can get up an hour earlier without it affecting you negatively, then maybe you could do that. Uh, but, you know, you want, you want some downtime every day, okay, or you're just going to get burnt out. Um, another... Another time to take advantage of, obviously, is the weekend. Most people don't work on the weekends, or most developers don't. Well, I shouldn't say that. It depends. But a lot of people don't work on the weekend, and that's a really good time to take advantage of, um, especially if you don't have kids. You have you should have a ton of time to, to learn and, and work on your own projects, maybe have a side business. Um, if you do have kids, then you know it's 10 times harder to, to manage your time. I have two. And, um, you know, the weekends is really the time that I get to spend the most with them. So um, I do, I, I mean, I do do my own stuff aside from like YouTube and, and uh, courses and all that, but um, not, not a ton. 
So, you know, maximize your weekends, but I wouldn't say make you like full days, like eight hours of learning Saturday and Sunday, maybe do like four hours each or do like, you know, six hours Saturday and take Sunday completely off. Um, you know, it's up, you guys know your own schedule and your own, you know, your own abilities and stuff. Um, so weekends in the mornings and mornings, nights, weekends, another time to take advantage of is your commute. Um, and, and this may not be possible for everybody. You really need a good cell phone data plan so you get internet in your car. Um, and, and it's not just your commute, but any travel time. If you have like an unlimited data plan, you can listen to uh, podcasts, you can listen to YouTube videos, um, you know, an Audible account. If you have an Audible account, you can get textbooks, uh, audiobooks. Just don't watch videos while you're driving, please. I don't want to be responsible for, for accidents. Um, I actually have YouTube Red where it allows you to shut the, the video off and it saves you on band, bandwidth and it prevents you from, you know, being tempted to, to watch the video. And even before that, I would put the phone face down so I wasn't tempted. Uh, but some some ideas for you to to listen to in the car, you know, there's a real, there's a, a couple good podcasts. My favorite um, po uh, web development podcast is Syntax, which is uh, Wes Boss and um, uh, Scott from Level Up Toots. That, that's a, basically a front-end developer podcast. They talk a lot about JavaScript and React and CSS and all that stuff. Uh, also, YouTube channels, there's a few good ones to listen to. Uh, Chris Hawks has a really good channel where it's not necessarily tutorials, but he talks about the industry and different technologies and so on. So that's he, he has a good channel to listen to. Uh, Coding Tech is a really good channel for like talks, uh, conference talks. JS Conf is another one as well. Um, coding phase and and uh, coding tutorials 360, or I think he changed his, his his channel name to Dylan Israel. They do like really long live streams, which of course isn't like um, tutorials or anything, but they talk a lot about uh, development and about the industry. So it's th those are good videos to watch. Uh, you know, if you're going on a long drive or something like that, if you have a long commute. Um, so let's see what else. So we have the week, the nights, the weekends, the mornings, your commute. Another area you could save time is if you're doing just nonsense. And, and what I mean by that is like web surfing, doing something, doing stuff that it's not really enjoyable to you, but you just get sucked into it. Um, you know, a lot of us get into the social media and Facebook, Instagram and all that, uh, which is fine to like to keep in touch with family members or if you're using it for your business. But I noticed that a lot of people lately are just arguing constantly on social media, um, you know, keyboard warriors just fighting with each other over mostly like polit political views and uh, liberal views and conservative views and people trying to change other people's minds. And that's just ridiculous. And, and it's, it's negative. It's not bringing, bringing you anything. This day and age, people just pick a side. Unfortunately, no one wants to look at things logically. Um, that's why I don't I don't talk about politics or anything on my channel or or with anybody really. Um, so you know, don't. And I know a lot of you guys are intelligent, so you see this 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 re ridiculous behavior, and you probably want to say something, and you get into arguments. Don't just leave that alone. If if any of you guys do that. Uh, replace it with with being productive in, in learning and in, in bettering yourself. All right, um, let's see what else. So if you are a developer, meaning, I mean, if you have a development job, when you learn stuff outside of work, make it stuff that you won't learn at work, okay? Because that time at work is another huge area to maximize learning. Um, but, you know, you're, you're only going to learn a specific set of skills at work. Um, so do other stuff outside of work. Now, I'm not saying don't use the same technologies. Like if you use React in the front end and, I don't know, C Sharp on the back end, I'm not saying don't do React and C Sharp outside of work, but don't do stuff that you know you will learn in work. Do stuff that you can learn and you can bring to the table at your current position and, you know, uh, maybe, maybe make the company better. So, you know, you really want to maximize that time at work. Um, so that's really it, guys. Uh, I don't want to, to go too long here, but, 
you know, just everyone's different. It's, it's hard to make a video like this because everyone's life is so different. So there's no standard to follow. Um, there's no guide or anything like that. I can only give my experience and, and my uh, insight. So, you know, take it or leave it. Take it with a grain of salt. Don't don't um, think that everything I say is, is exactly what you should do. Take it, analyze your own life and, and see if you can apply it. All right. So thanks a lot, guys. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please leave it a like and I will see you next time. Hey guys, one of the best, if not the best resource that I can refer you to for starting a freelance business is at studywebdevelopment.com slash freelancing. The creator Kyle shared it with me and I can personally vouch that this bundle is well worth it and it gives you a 130 page guide to freelancing and also comes packaged with things like an invoicing template, client proposals, HTML, CSS templates, a portfolio website, access to a private Facebook community, and much more. So use the code BRAD20 and get 25% off today.